Hey gang, I'm Dr. Who. This is Accounting is a Joke, where accounting makes sense so you can make dollars. Today we're going to have a walkthrough illustration of how to properly use the accounting equation to solve for unknown variable amounts. If you're unfamiliar to the accounting equation, I provided a link to some videos that could get you up to speed in no time. So without any further ado, let's rock and roll. All right. The records for Felix Company show the following at December 31st, 2024. So we have some beginning and ending asset and liability amounts. We have common stock, dividends, revenues. We need to find expenses. And we have January 1st, retained earnings of $45,000. Okay, so it says up here December 31st. And so they're giving us January 1st. So obviously this is beginning retained earnings. All right, requirement one tells us to compute the missing amount for Felix. You will need to determine retained earnings December 31st, 2024, and stockholders' equity December 31st, 2024. Begin by determining stockholders' equity. We work the accounting equation and solve for stockholders' equity beginning and end of the period. All right, so we're going to use the accounting equation gain to solve for equity. Easy breezy, right? What's the accounting equation? Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So if we're trying to solve for equity, we have to rework it, tweak it a little bit, right? So how are we going to do that? We're going to transpose liabilities to the left side of the accounting equation. So that would give us assets minus liabilities equals equity. And that makes sense, game, because we know that equity is the actual remaining amount that's related to the shareholders that they truly own with the company, the net assets. So beginning, going back to here, our beginning balance of assets was 67,000. Our ending balance of assets was 46,000. Our beginning balance of liabilities was 11,000 and our ending balance of liabilities was $34,000. So if we use our trusty calculator, we can plug in our amount. So if we take 67,000 minus 11,000, that will give us $56,000. Then we're going to take 46 thousand minus thirty four thousand and that's going to give us twelve thousand dollars gang for our ending balance we're going to check the answer bags on deck moving on identify the formula and then solve for retained earnings balance at the end of the period so what do we have here we just calculated the beginning and ending balance of equity so we could calculate the change as we can see our equity decrease, but I don't think we need to know that right now, but that was a brief observation. They want us to use the formula to calculate ending retained earnings, okay? So we calculated equity and let's see what else is given to us. Common stock. So what do we know, gang? We know that stockholders equity is broken down into two parts, paid in capital, which is common stock and retained earnings. So, if we utilize that equation, we can back into our true calculation for retained earnings. So, since we're looking for ending retained earnings, we would take our ending stockholders equity amount and subtract that from common stock. So, if we look here, our ending stockholders equity amount, which we calculated up here was 12,000. And we are going to subtract the common stock, which is down here for 11,000. And that will give us our ending retained earnings gain. Don't think we need a calculator for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and just put in the stack, $1,000. Let's check the answer. Bags all day. Moving on. Rearrange the formula to compute the change in retained earnings and then solve for the missing expense amount for Felix Company. Ah, so that's right. We have to back into the expense. So they want us to solve for the expenses by utilizing the retained earnings balance. Based on what we previously understand about retained earnings, retained earnings is income and it's affected by three things. What are the three things? Net income, which will increase retained earnings. 
net losses, which will decrease retain earnings, and of course, dividends, which will also decrease retain earnings. Now, we already know, gang, that net income is the combination of our revenues minus our expenses. So we can utilize that to back into the expense by utilizing that particular formula. Now, since they are trying to calculate the change, we're going to use both beginning and ending balances for retain earnings so that we get back into the expenses. Just like our statement for retain earnings, which happens to be your beginning balance of retain earnings plus or minus net income or net loss minus dividends will give you your ending retain earnings balance. So we're going to take that formula, tweak it out and transpose it a little bit to back into expenses. So we're going to use the beginning retain earnings balance plus revenues because we have that. We're looking for expenses. So we transpose the expense to the right side. So we have to subtract dividends. And we also need to subtract ending retain earnings. And that gain will give us our expense amount that we're looking for. So, beginning balance retain earnings, which I believe was up here, $45,000. Our revenues, which are $205,000. Dividends, which happens to be $8,000. And our retain earnings, which we just finished calculating, gang, which is $1,000. So, if we take our trusted calculator, this should give us the expenses that we are looking for. So, we're going to take $45,000 plus $205,000 minus $8,000 in dividends minus $1,000 in retained earnings, the ending balance, and that will give us $241,000 that should be our correct expense amount. Let's check the answer. Bags all day. Lastly, they want us to identify the formula and solve for Felix net income all loss for the period. Easy breezy, gang. We already know what the deal is. Net income is our revenues minus our expenses. We just finished calculating expenses. So we're gonna plug that in there briefly. We saw our revenues was $205,000. Our expenses was $241,000. Uh-oh, something not looking right. Look like for this period, our expenses are higher than our revenues. Definitely that's a bad thing game for this company because that means that we're gonna have a net loss. Come on, man. So, that should give us a net loss minus sign of 36,000. Check the answer, bags all day. So that's it, gang. A quick illustration of how to properly calculate or solve for the unknown expenses using the accounting equation. Hopefully this made sense for you and if that light bulb was clicking upstairs, please like, subscribe, and share the channel with your friends for more ways to chase the bag. As always, I'm Dr. Who, and it's my humble pleasure to have you here, and I'll see you soon.